Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's webcast for the configuration of outbound routing. My name is Nicholas. I'm a technical trainer here at 3CX. Today, I will be taking you through the basics of the configuration of outbound rules in 3CX phone system. When the PBX uh, has some extensions provisioned onto it, you are dialing from one extension to the other. The PBX will recognize extensions which are provisioned onto it and forward the calls accordingly. Once you try to dial a number which is not provisioned onto the PBX, the PBX will not know how to handle this particular call. In this particular case, uh, it will need to uh, consult a set of rules which we call the outbound rules in order to be instructed on how to handle this call. Uh, you are basically defining the access to the outbound lines and the outbound numbers which you have. When a call is being made, uh, the PBX is being instructed which line to use. Uh, this should be transparent to the end user. When the end user dials a number, they really just need to dial the number and the PBX should be configured intelligently enough in order to be able to know where to route this particular call. A user does not need to remember any prefixes, although if you do have prefixes, this is quite okay, but there is no need to have prefixes generally with the PBX. Outbound rules are used whenever outbound calls need to be made. Outbound calls are basically calls which the PBX does not recognize as its own internal numbers, extensions, system extensions, etc. You can use the outbound rules with least cost routing. For example, you might have a number which is to dial in the USA, for example, if you are in the UK. Uh, you are dialing 001, you have a VoIP provider which is located in the USA. Instead of sending it out through your default telco, your ISDN gateway, or your local VoIP provider, you may be able to send it through the USA VoIP provider which you have configured on to your PBX. This way, uh, the PBX will know whenever it is uh, receiving a number for 001, instead of going to the UK VoIP provider, it will go to the US VoIP provider. This way you are saving cost on your outgoing calls. The outbound rules are also used for bridge connections as the bridge connection is considered an outgoing call. It is considered an outside entity. It is not provisioned onto the PBX itself, uh, the extensions that is, but when you go to connect over the bridge, you will need to define these connections through the outbound rules. You can also use the outbound rules for blocking purposes. For example, you might have some users who are allowed only to make uh, local calls and not to be making international calls. In this particular case, you will be using the outbound rules for blocking purposes. To create the outbound rules is very simple. Uh, you will need to go to the management console, uh, go to outbound rules, and click on add outbound rule. You must give the rule a name. This rule is used um, to give the rule a name. This rule is used during troubleshooting, and you will need to have this clearly defined for troubleshooting purposes. In order for an outbound rule to be valid, it needs to have at least one or more matching criteria. The criteria which we mention are these numbers, these fields in the center of the page. In order for the rule to be valid as well, it needs to have at least one outgoing route. If you don't have any routes configured, the default is block calls. The calls will be blocked to any numbers with zero, zero in this particular case. The criteria now are based on the destination number. 
we are mentioning calls to numbers starting with a prefix. There are no wild cards in the outbound rules. It is just the prefix. For example, you can see the number 001 469 206 9035. This is the USA uh, sales center in Dallas, 43CX. And you can base this on the entire destination number, or you can base it on uh, the calls to a particular country, 001 for example, 00 for international calls if you are not based in the US, uh, 011 if you are in the US, and 0011 if you are based in Australia. You can also have calls to a specific area, 001469. This is calls to the Dallas region. For the calls from extension or extensions, uh, you can have different uh, criteria types. For example, you might have an explicit extension, for example, 100. You can comma separate extensions, so they are all taken into consideration, 100 and 102. Or you can have a range of extensions using the dash, 100-102. We'll take the three extensions from 100 to 102 into consideration. You can also mix and match using the comma and the dash in order to have a more granular outbound rule. The formation also applies to the dialed number length. In this example, you can see calls to numbers with a length of three, eight, nine, and 10 digits by using the comma and the dash. Also in the outbound rule criteria, instead of having particular extension numbers, you can define one or more extension groups. When you have more than one group in the PBX, you can assign these outbound rules to particular extension groups. Optionally, you can also create hidden routing groups where you create uh, a routing group. For example, we can see the last one in the screen is trainees. You can create hidden routing groups, for example, by removing all the user group rights for this particular group. And this will not be showing up anywhere uh, in any present screen, for example. And it will only be shown for the administrator and can be used for routing purposes. The rule in which the outbound rules, uh, the order in which the outbound rules are defined is very important as the PBX will process the rules in a top down fashion. It is like a waterfall starting from the top and moving its way down. Once the PBX finds a rule which matches, it will process it and it will ignore any subsequent rules after this. As a general rule, the more restrictive a rule is, the higher up it should be. The more relaxed a rule uh, is, the more further down the list it should be. Finally, we will go and talk about the E164 settings. The E164 settings are basically, uh, can reformat the numbers to conform to a standard, uh, to a common standard. Uh, this can be enabled or disabled in version 14, uh, allowing you to either use the E164 number processing using the country code and the international dial codes and the area codes of the particular area you are, or you can disable it to allow you to modify this uh, number processing based on your outbound rules. This is basically the modification of the number before sending it to the provider. This is up to you. Uh, for example, you may have uh, the PBX in one country, but many different VoIP providers in different countries, and the E164 number processing may not be valid in all the countries because you are basing uh, your PBX in many different VoIP providers in many different countries. In this way, you can disable it and use the outbound rules to process the numbers. Ladies and gentlemen, I will like to give you a demonstration now for the configuration of outbound rules.
This is the PBX I will be using today. I will go and create my first outbound rule. Just click on outbound rules and click on add outbound rule. I will be using the UK uh, numbering in this particular scheme today. So I will put local calls. Calls to numbers starting with a prefix. I won't be using a prefix for those local numbers. I will only be defining a number length of eight. So any eight digit number will be going in as uh, a local number to the UK. I can go a bit further with the processing and create any prefix starting from one to nine with an eight digit number to go through to my local ISDN gateway. I will not strip any digits. I will want the number to go as it is through to the provider or through the gateway in this particular case, and I will not be prepending any digits. I will click on OK, and I have created my first outbound rule. We can see here that my prefixes are from one to nine with a length of eight, and I can see the first route is the ISDN gateway. I will go and add an outbound rule. National calls. In the UK, to make a national call, to go from one area to another, you dial a zero. I will also define this to go through to the ISDN gateway. A lot of people ask me, why should I make a separate rule for local calls and national calls if they are going to the same destination through the same route. In this particular case, I can restrict local calls uh, for everyone. I can allow local calls for everyone and I can restrict national calls for everyone so they can only make local calls. In this particular case, using a granular outbound rule strategy is more important uh, than being uh, efficient. In this particular case, you will want more granular uh, outbound rules to allow you more uh, configuration. I will now go and create a third rule called mobile numbers. Calls to numbers starting with a prefix of 07. 07 in the UK is the prefix for the mobile numbers and I will choose in this particular case the GSM gateway because I am assuming that my provider has given me some GSM cards with an unlimited numbering plan, calling plan. Uh, so I will be using those to make calls to local mobile numbers. I will not strip any digits and I will not prepend anything. Click on OK. Now, I will go to create an outbound rule for international calls. In the UK, to dial internationally, you dial 00, and I will send these calls to my VoIP provider. Okay, now, for this particular case, I am assuming that I have some trainees which I have just hired, so I will want to block these uh, extensions from making any calls. Uh, in order to do that though, first I will go and create an extension group so it is a lot easier to uh, configure. I will just click on extensions. I will go to add group. I will call the group trainees and I will add a few extensions to this particular group. I'm adding three extensions to this group. I will go to the default group rights and I will remove all the rights from this particular group and I will click on apply. Just making sure yes everything is complete and we can see that extension 105 
107 and 108 are also part of the default group. So now I will go to my outbound rules and I will create a new rule blocking the trainees. Okay, instead of choosing particular extensions, I will choose the extension group. We can see that calls from extension group and we can see the trainees are selected now and I will choose block calls. I want the calls to go now through my bridge to my remote office. I have a remote office and I want to make calls to that particular office now. Calls to remote office. Calls to number starting with the prefix. Now, if you have any bridges, any bridged PBXs which are on the same extension range as the PBX which you are working on now, you will need to create a prefix. This is one of the few cases where a prefix is required. Otherwise, you can just create the extension range. Uh, for example, if they are on the 200 range, you will start with a prefix of two and with a length of three if they are three digit extensions. Have the call to go to the bridge and click on OK. I will now go and show you one of the most important outbound rules which can be made on a PBX. Calls to the emergency numbers. You can create an outbound rule uh, for the emergency numbers on the PBX, but the PBX does have a specialized setting, a specialized uh, section of the configuration, which is for the configuration of emergency numbers. Going to settings, emergency numbers, click on add. I will name my emergency number 112, which is the pan-European emergency number, and I will give it a number of 112. I will route this particular emergency number to the ISDN gateway. It is very important when you do route your emergency number calls to a gateway or to a provider, that you have this number registered with the provider in order for uh, the address to be shown to the emergency services when you give them a call. Otherwise, they will be sent to the wrong address and you could be liable for any fraudulent charges to the emergency services. Click on OK. We can see that the emergency number is selected now and it has been applied. Click on Apply at the bottom of the page as well. A lot of people do neglect this clicking on OK as well. What happens now when we go to the outbound rules? We can see now that the emergency number has been sent directly to the top. The emergency number uh, 112 has been given the outbound rule name. If we double click on that now, we can see that uh, this has been given the number of 112 with a length of three and sent to the ISDN gateway. I can optionally send uh, the number to my VoIP provider as well. I will send it to the GSM gateway first and then to my VoIP provider. If I'm gonna do this, it would be best in order to to have this routing just in case the ISDN gateway is not available. Now, talking about the routes now, route one, route two, and route three. Route one is the main route for this particular outbound rule. In the case where the ISDN gateway is not available or is not registered, basically when we say not available, uh, it's basically not registered. If it's busy, it could be that all 
the ISDN lines have been taken up. For example, if you have a BRI ISDN gateway, you have two calls going through this particular gateway. It is busy, so it will not be able to process any more calls. You will then send the calls to the next available route, which is the GSM gateway. Assuming you have, for example, five cards uh, on this gateway, if you use up those five channels as well, it will fail over to the third route, which is the VoIP provider. So we can see now that the emergency number has three different routes. I also want to make uh, a rule which blocks premium numbers. Calls to numbers starting with a prefix of 09 for any 09 number, which is a premium number in the UK. I will want to block these calls. Now, when we go to make a block to the uh, premium numbers, we receive uh, a call from the boss, from the CEO of the company saying that he does not want 09 numbers to be blocked from his particular extension. Okay, now in this particular case, add outbound rule, we'll name it allow CEO to 09 numbers. Calls from extensions, I will add the boss's extension onto here. Calls to number starting with a prefix of 09. And allow him to go through the ISDN gateway. Okay, so this is basically a very basic outbound rule set. Let's go now and test and see if the outbound rule set is correct. I can see a few mistakes here uh, for the time being. We can see that if I have one of my trainees, which is blocked, from trying to call the remote office, they will not be able to make those particular calls because the rule which is the trainees blocked is above the calls to the remote office. However, they are able to make emergency number calls, they are able to make local calls, national, mobile number calls, and international calls. So, for this particular case, I will need to block the trainees from making any calls. I will bring them to just below the emergency numbers because I do want them to make emergency number calls just in case something happens in the office. I will also bring the calls to the remote office above as well. So when they try to call the remote office at extension 200, for example, they will be able to make that particular call. Now, if anyone in the office goes to make a local call, it will go directly to uh, the ISDN gateway. That's all fine and dandy. Now, national calls as well going through the ISDN gateway. But if someone tries to make a call to the mobile numbers now, 07, once they dial 07, the PBX will process the rules one by one and we'll see that yes, 07 is a valid rule and it will be processed as part of the national calls through the ISDN gateway, instead of going through the GSM gateway, which is free calls to GSM. I can either move the national calls rule down or move the mobile numbers rule up. In the same way, I will need to move my international calls up as well. I will need to also block 09 numbers as well, but I will need to allow the CEO to call 09 numbers before blocking the rest of them. So in this particular case, we can see that when the boss dials 07, he will be going through the mobile numbers normally. Once he dials 09, he will be able to go normally through the ISDN gateway. Anyone else calling 09 numbers will be blocked. There is no 
uh, outgoing route. International calls will go directly as well to the VoIP provider and national calls will be processed through the ISDN gateway. With this particular case, the outbound rule set is complete and you can now make calls normally uh, through the proper channels. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you for joining me today for this uh, webcast for the configuration of outbound rules. I hope to see you again at another one of our webcasts. From me, thank you and goodbye.